Chapter 10 Continual Renewal There is a need to periodically cleanse our relationship with our partner. There is always something in the self that is either overcompensating, pretending, giving in, or pushing too hard. The only way one can reach that and move it out is through a ritual. Before we can communicate in deeper states of intimacy, we must address the subtle things that our partner has done that we didn't like. Because of some rule of gentility, we tend not to respond to them and they pile up. Our thoughts take us to places of uncertainty and the postponement of confrontation, and then we become very passive. It is fine to be polite, but where is the place for us to speak our frustration and disappointment? In ritual, such politeness may be put aside. Once you have drawn a line marking sacred space and called upon spirit, There is no lying, no pretending. In this space, it is sometimes best even to shout your frustrations because what you're saying is so real. In our village, every five days, there is an opportunity for renewal of a relationship on a day chosen by the couple. All the bad things that the couple has accumulated are ejected. Usually, the woman sits facing north, back to back with the man who sits facing south within a circle of ash. The ritual starts with an invocation of spirit. Then, the two people start to express aloud to spirit their frustrations. As they do so, their pain increases, then explodes Each person is busy speaking his own pain and does not pay attention to what the other is saying. Some people whisper. Some people shout. Some people prefer other ways of communication. It is up to the individuals involved to decide what is best for them, as long as they are using methods that enable them to release all of their feelings. In our village, There is usually a lot of gesticulation to allow the body to speak. This is not, however, an opportunity to get into a fist fight. If outsiders were to observe this ritual, they might fear that the couple were going to kill each other. But if they watch long enough, they will see that the ritual has a powerful emotional ending. The couple will slow down, reach a reconciliation, and then pour water onto each other. The heart of this process is washing away all the friction that has settled into the couple's life. Think of this ritual not as a confrontation, but as a renewal of the marriage vow. In Dagada culture, we don't believe that saying yes one time is enough for intimacy to always be there. We need to renew our intimacy continuously and make it as close to what spirit wants as possible. This ritual of renewal can also be good for people who have a history of time limits for their relationships, who are able to be in a relationship for only, let's say, a year or so, then they have to get out. Renewing their commitment before that time limit arrives can be helpful in breaking this pattern. It helps because some people can get really caught up in telling themselves that all their relationships are temporary. Outside of ritual, there is a tendency to blame the other person. We don't see our own actions. Creating a ritual space to release tensions helps us to be open to our partner's concerns and it creates in us an ear that can listen without being defensive. Sometimes our partner may offend us without even realizing it. Maybe something was going on inside him and we just happened to be the nearest person to strike out at. We do not usually mean to hurt our loved ones, but in times of pressure, it can happen. 
The renewal ritual gives an opportunity to heal those wounds and hurts. It creates a space where couples can voice their hurts without placing blame and pointing fingers. There is simple power in voicing things. It helps people let go of them. And when water is applied at the end of the ritual, it rinses them away and brings about peace in the relationship. The renewal ritual can be performed by two people without the presence of the community. It is an important ritual in the sense that it allows couples to clear the air before jumping into sexual intimacy. If you carry anger or sadness into intimacy, you will transfer that energy to your partner. Unless the problems in a relationship are really huge, this ritual prevents small issues from piling on top of one another to become big issues. When we don't listen to the little things happening around us, we end up having huge earthquakes. So this kind of renewal and cleansing of a relationship is very important to intimate life, especially for newlywed couples. Whenever a couple renews their relationship, an alignment of spirits takes place. Special powers come out of this alignment. Remember that this is not just about the spirits of two people. We are talking about the spirits of a whole village or a whole tribe coming into alignment. The power that comes out of that is healing. In the village, there are all kinds of rituals done around the issue of renewal. There are every day and every five day renewal rituals done by the couple. There is also a yearly atonement ritual that is a communal ritual with its focus on the couples. It helps people be concerned about other people's problems. In Africa, they say, that if one person gets sick, everybody is sick. The village or the tribe is seen as a huge tree with thousands of branches. When a part of this living entity is diseased, there is a need to re-examine the whole tree. This is why when somebody is sick in the village, everybody is worried. It reminds everybody that there is something present that is potentially dangerous for all. When people hear that something bad happened to somebody, they don't say, I'm glad it's not me. Instead, they bring their support to help this person gain peace again. It is for this reason that the yearly atonement ritual to heal couples' differences and wounds to restore peace is done as a community. The elders will set a date for all the couples in the village to meet at the riverbank. Each couple will bring along with them the two pots that were made for their wedding. These small pots were blessed at that time, one for each person, and are kept in their shrines. In each of these jars, there is a talisman as well as medicines, herbs, water, and other things. After the invocation, each couple steps forward and hands their jars to the elders. The elders mix together a bit of the water from each pot. The water is then presented to each person to sip or cleanse the body with. If they take the medicine, it means that they have agreed to resolve their differences. If they don't, another problem is created and the elders must find out what is happening. This is rare, since such conflicts are usually taken care of in the community ash circle before the atonement ritual begins. Then, each couple is taken to the river, where the women of the village will bathe the woman and then walk her to a specific place to await her partner. The men will do the same simultaneously for the man, leaving a distance between him and his wife. As people sing a special journeying song to the couple, they go under the water and manage to meet there. When they come out holding hands, you will hear a lot of screaming and yelling in the village. 
This means that spirits have once again given their blessing to the couple's journey. Without completely getting out of the water, the couple will then make a vow to spirit, to each other, to the community, and to all the natural forces around them. Earth, water, mountains, creeks, animal, rocks, fire, trees, and so forth. Renewal rituals do not limit themselves to people. People renew their relationship with everything around them. They need to have a good relationship with all these things in order to make their relationship work. At the end, they thank them for their help. After this atonement ritual, which ends with many days of celebration, I can't wait for next year's ritual. I imagine myself going crazy without it. As people go home filled with the spirit of renewal, they commit themselves more than ever to working on their intimate life. Everybody wants to keep their relationship healthy. There are many opportunities in the West to be in rituals with friends and family members. These are people we need to renew our vows with too. The rituals can be either celebratory or designed to clear the air. Family reunions would have a different taste if they were given such new meaning. They could become a time when each individual is seen and acknowledged by the family as a whole. Family members would be more supportive of one another if they created rituals in which they could express their continuing support for one another or work at bridging differences. Those who attended the marriage ceremony should be the first to see where a couple is not strong enough and help them be strong. They should periodically bring them to a ritual where they can look at their weaknesses, acknowledge them, and take steps towards strengthening. They should also bring them into rituals where they will be helped to see their best parts, their positive sides, and their strengths in order to help maintain them or even make them better. Because when two people live together, they don't necessarily always see each other's good qualities. Somebody else often has a better eye.